Hey guys, thanks for joining me on another episode of Jack's Mechanics. Today we've got a Suzuki Swift 20... 2008, sorry. Uh, just got a check engine light on, new customer. Just trying to load the car up. It is a 1.5 litre, 288,000 Ks. And yeah, like I say, first time I've seen the car, apparently there's no complaints other than the light. I'll just put a code scan together and see what we've got going on. Almost put bets on uh, PO420. Alright, somebody owes me some money. Everybody that watches this video at least owes me 50 bucks. Pretty common for these things. Um, I'm surprised it's gotten this far. Uh, 288,000 Ks and only just turned the light on. ABS pump motor. The awkward thing about these ones are like a, they're a mani cat. So you have to replace the manifold and the, and the cat and everything together. So most people, because of the cost of them, I think they end up being like $1,500. I think the last time I price went up, they go, oh, it's just a light. But obviously they don't understand if there's any other issues. It's only one light. So we'll just grab some data. Probably not going to end up doing anything with this. Data. We'll bring up the um, front and rear O2 sensors. And we're probably going to see them mirroring each other. Basically the rear O2 will be going high and low voltage as well. So O2, I'm going to say that's the upstream. This is obviously the downstream scene as it says S2. We'll just have a look. Bit of trims. I mean it could have a um, another underlying issue causing this to Set the light, uh, the PO420. Sorry, just trying to read at the same time. Just get some. Uh, Come on. Oh my god, I better. So we'll speed it up a little bit. Not too bad, but if we increase some RPM, we might see that. So at idle, not too bad, but um, obviously we've increased RPM, heat, and airflow, oxygen, and that. The um, cat can't do its job properly and basically store that oxygen. That's pretty much the test that we would do for these things. Um, we'll just go back into the OBD2 and see if we can get some easier to read fuel trim and see. Maybe there's an underlying issue. Hope everybody had a good. Um, Christmas and New Year. This is the first video for 2023, I believe. Had a pretty interesting um, car yesterday, high-end Elantra. 
2014 uh, with all the lights on the dash, ABS, traction, uh, airbag, handbrake light. Airbag light was separate, uh, separate issue, needed a clock spring, fix that. Customer wanted to go ahead and um, have the other lights diagnosed. Uh, the local Hyundai dealer said that it needed an ABS module and it was $8,000. They wanted to get a second opinion, obviously being at that cost. Uh, so we carried out our test, test, checked our powers, checked our grounds. Um, powers were good. Grounds had 7.6 volt, uh, volts of volt drop on there. So we went to our, our ground, um, which was inside the car. Um, in the passenger front, well, left front kick well, uh, kick panel, depending on where you are in the world. And, um, yep, had a loose ground. The bolt was actually tight, but the ground was loose. So we, um, and it was painted as well. So we cleaned up the ground, the surface, put a couple of washers on there, tightened them up. So if you uh, tighten that up, cleared the codes. Well, it actually didn't have any codes. It had no communication to that module. Um, so I guess that's why they called it an ABS module, but obviously good to do your checks. So here we do have a fuel trim issue. It's using quite a bit of fuel. I don't... Th adding a quite a bit of fuel. Oh my God, I'm just trying to think. Personally, don't... Mm, know if this would um, cause a PO420. I'm surprised it doesn't have any other codes. We'll just raise the RPM, see what we're looking at. See if we're looking for a vacuum leak, which it almost looks like we'd, we are. Just about 2,000 RPM as well. Definitely bucket loads better. Pretty sure this um, this is a um, MAF engine. Haven't actually opened um, the bonnet. Definitely a lot better. You know, we're up 20, 30, 32% total trim. It's a lot. Almost looks like 12.5 of it is its um, max total trim, uh, max trim on the long term. Short term can go a bit higher. So um, the way we work it, we with a check engine light, they get an hour's diagnosis. So we'll go, we'll have a look at this, see if we can find out where this um, vacuum leak is. Go back actually. Um, display these trouble codes see if there's anything different in here nothing there just check our freeze frame maybe we've got a separate issue that's just started to show its face before this light was on I actually don't know how long this light's been on I like doing um, diagnostic work. You get to sit in the car, don't have to destroy your back. Working on crappy cars. Engine warm. Yeah, so trims at this point in time when. Um, uh, but they are driving along 60%, or 60 k sorry. 1600 so that would make sense it looks like looks like it's got a vacuum leak as well um, but that's not when this code was set and obviously we could see when at idle that um, the cat was sort of looking okay um, bearing in mind obviously this is looking at a, on a scan tool if we did back probe into the oxygen sensors um, with a scope it would be a lot faster um, Pretty sure a scope is about a thousand times faster than the, the scan tool. So um, this is obviously processed by the ECU. Um, back door uh, information where the scope is sort of front door before the ECU. So we'll just go and have a look for a vacuum leak and hopefully fix up one issue for them. But And then recommend a cat 
we'll see where, where, where they want to go with that one. Um, so we can see the Manny Cat down there, two parts of the manifold and the cat right there. So uh, we're just going to clamp the purge line to see if we can see any change on the scan tool. Looking at the short term trims. No change there, can't, can't feel it purging, so I'll, um, it is a MAF sensor engine. So we'll just grab the um, smoke tester and smoke it. Probably the easiest thing to do right now. Um, see if we can find a leak. Uh, in fact, before we grab the smoke tester, um, we'll do the brake booster check as well. We can get that on there. Well, that's got an instant change of RPM. I hope you guys could hear that. And our fuel trims are coming down, so. I wonder what we've got going on there. Is it an internal vacuum leak on the booster? Trims are looking good. Look at that. Alright, I will grab the smoke tester regardless and um, smoke that line and see if it's in the booster or connected. Oh, it sort of has to be in the booster at that point. Oh, and I guess it could be split up here. I can feel the check valve, sorry, feel the check valve in there. I'll grab the smoke tester. Righto, so... Oh, I've got maybe a... Not sure. Not a small leak from the uh, throttle actuator. Not really a big deal though. We see those seals leaking a lot of the time. Um, that noise that you can hear is like the pressure relief valve in the um, smoke machine anyway. So that's usual, but why is that? Oh, it's kinked over. Maybe it was the kink. Small leak from the EGR valve as well. Um, you want to again be using a halogen light to try and find the smoke. Main, mainly concerned about the booster, um, booster hose itself. So not really any leaks there. Looks like it's probably going to be internal. I'll swap the, swap it over to the. Um, sorry about the video. Swap it over to the booster ho uh, the booster, and um, recheck that there. Righto guys, you can see that woofing out. Move this hose out of the way, make sure we're not getting confused. I can hear it, hopefully you guys can too. There you go, hopefully the camera's picking up that smoke. Coming from the O-ring um, where the master cylinder um, goes in there by the looks of things. But yeah, again, this is a, um, a vacuum leak at idle. Um, not, you know, and obviously that code was set at 1600 RPM. Surprising it doesn't have more than one fault code. Um, but yeah, maybe we've just caught this on the, just as it's um, started to, to play up. Probably should have smoked the booster first before I pulled all that, uh, pull that off, but whatever, it's life. Um, see what they want to do about that about that saga uh, let me just try and think about this I'm not sure if that is a, if, if that's a split diaphragm or not or the o-ring just trying to no it should be the o-ring on that one yeah it's definitely definitely gonna be the o-ring in there Pretty sure. <laughs> Either way, we'll see what the customer wants to do. Um, you know, maybe we can pull the mass cylinder off and um, replace that O-ring easy and go from there. So we've got the go-ahead on the um, seal, but the actual Manny Cat itself, um, the job would be like $2,500, so she's not going to do that. But here's the seal, um, obviously quite busted up. See if we can get a um, factory seal for that and 
replace it. So back guys, a couple of hours later, got a new seal, comes with a washer, upgraded part. Um, so our seal, you have a flat, end, a flat edge and a rounded edge. So the rounded edge goes into the booster. So you basically you put the washer over the nose of the mass cylinder, put the seal on and we'll pop it all back together. So I managed to unbolt the ABS pump and the um, master cylinder and basically just pull it out of the way so that that end on it there I'll put the seal on and the by well, the washer on then the seal on and I'll pop it back together and then um, we'll do our checks again so I got it back together just the master cylinder uh, but yeah you can I've got the smoke tester on there and you can hear the um, pressure relief valve ticking away meaning we've got no leak uh, you, you know, even though I've got the LED light, um, we would be able to see, obviously, that that amount, and even we could hear it before, or well, hopefully you could hear it, I could hear it whooshing out, but, um, yeah, I'll assemble the rest of it, and we'll recheck the fuel trims, and I think that'll be a wrap for this one. Alright, we've got it back together, uh, pump and everything's done, uh, my cylinder's all done, all the intake um, and everything that we had apart here. So that's all sweet, we're just loading up the scan tool. Hopefully anytime soon. We'll just recheck these fuel trims. Just just thinking back about the um, fuel trim um, issue um, relating to the cat issue, like oh, that's not gonna be, have any effect because the fuel trims are doing the job to make the engine run at stoic anyway so um you know maybe if the fuel trims were were super maxed out um, but obviously we still had some short-term correction um that was able to go on oh god it might help if i keyed up um uh, yeah so um some short-term correction obviously uh, so it's still probably running pretty close to 14.7 um which would you know be the correct air fuel for the cat to do its thing and so this is just going to be a separate issue but either way, either way still cool that we found this with no codes Fuel trim, fuel trim. So, in open loop at the moment. Oh, closed loop, that was really fast. Instantly, fuel trims on the short term are pulling away. Uh, from that long-term trim that we had in the memory, which is perfect, what, what we want to see. Instantly, like this, we can basically wipe our hands of the car and send it out fixed. We know that this is a um, fixed car. So that's awesome news for everybody. Uh, obviously, our coolant temp's low. Idle speed's gonna be a bit higher. We'd probably expect that to settle down a little bit. Up at 1100. Um, yeah, thanks for following us guys, I hope you enjoyed this one, um, hope you learnt something, if you did, please consider liking, please consider subscribing, and we'll catch you at the next one, and I wish you all a good year.